Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. And um, I'm running a little late today. I've been watching my... <clears throat> I'm mostly late because Amy... <sighs> we're going to have to fix our schedules um, for Bible study because now that Amy is back in school, every night she takes a shower between 8 and 9 o'clock. And I never know when she's going to come up here so what I need to do is tell her that from now on she has to take her shower at 8 o'clock. Um, but she had company tonight. So she came up here and got in the shower right when it was time for Bible study. And because it's quiet in here and there's nothing really, no noise, um, her shower's really loud. And you could hear her. And so I was like, I have to wait and come on later for Bible study. So anyway, with that said, because Amy is a late bird with her shower, we're just going to have to be a little later with Bible study. And um, if I try to come to y'all every night by 9.30ish, I think it'll be better. Because she likes to get in the bed, you know, pretty early when she has school. So um, we may just postpone it until that time from now on. And, and that way it'll be easier. Um we had, I had told y'all that we were going to start reading in the book of Genesis, and we went through Genesis chapter, all the way through uh, chapter, I believe it was nine the last time, or it may have been seven, I don't even remember, but anyway, I know I told y'all we were going to read until they got to the Tower of Babel, and we were going to stop there, and so we're not going to read about the Tower of Babel tonight, and, but gosh, there wasn't hardly anything to read, um, I didn't really give y'all much to read, and there wasn't much to it because um, it was really the flood, and then Noah sending the dove out, you know, and the dove finally found a leaf, and he came back, and then Noah um, was able to stop and get out of the ark. And then the next chapter talks mostly about uh, who begat who, begat who, begat who, and that's just showing you where the lineage comes from, okay? So the main thing that we were going to, I'm just going to touch the base with you on is uh, when Noah was out on that water uh, with all of those animals and his kids, um, he, um, when he, when he actually landed, you know, and he got out, the first thing he does is he thanks the Lord by building an altar, Okay. And he also um, does a sacrifice for the Lord. And so I got to thinking about that because really that's about all there was in our reading besides the lineage. And so I got to thinking about that and I got to thinking, and I felt kind of guilty because we're all one to run, run, run and ask for prayer and, you know, really, really, uh, be real concerned when we know that there's something big or we need or something about our health. But are we just as excited to thank the Lord when we get good news? And I would have to say no. And the reason I say that is because we'll say, oh, praise the Lord. But we don't make a big deal out of it. And we don't, you don't see many people on Facebook sending out messages on Wow, you know, let me tell you what happened to me today. It's mostly, you know, the the times when, oh, I've got a test, so everybody pray for me. And and so um, I think we make a bigger deal out of the bad and not as good of a deal out, out of the good. And one thing I did notice is that Noah did make a big deal. Of course, if I'd have been in an ark for as long as he had, I think I would have made a big deal too, especially with that many smelly animals, right? Uh, but even so, he built an altar and he offered a sacrifice. And, and I, it just made me think, you know, do I really build that altar? And do I really um, get to that point in my life to where God answers my prayer and I just get really excited and I spent some time with God. And I would have to say, most of the time, probably not as much as I should. 
I mean, if I'm honest, you know, when we're supposed to be honest. And then, um, do you really um, sacrifice anything, really, for the Lord? I mean, not much, really. Um, so, I, I was just thinking that about, about that, about Noah. No wonder God loved Noah. No wonder God decided that he was going to destroy the whole earth, but he just couldn't destroy Noah, you know? Because Noah was, um, Noah loved God, and, and God knew it. And so we need to think about that in our day-to-day -day lives. And, and, and are we the kind of person that God can be proud of and look down on and say, uh, you know, that Tammy Nichols, you know, she's one that, um, you know, that thinks about me and loves me. It's not what you do for God. It's not that we could ever do anything that's good enough to be real impressed for God to be impressed by us at all. It's just that, do we really love him? Do we really love him? And if we love him, does he know we do? You know, do, do we love him enough that we would stand out uh, to him? And so, um, I was just thinking of that. Um, now, the, when he gets out of the ark, of course he does that. And he does build this. So, it was, you know, it was something that showed that Noah was faithful. Okay. Now, Noah had sons, and they were um, Seth, uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth. And I'm going to say this because this is my study material. Not because, because when you read this part, it's a little bit, you know, uh, the names and the begots and all that stuff. And then they tell you where they lived and which cities they started. Because this is the, y'all, this is really the beginning all over again. I mean, God destroyed Everything on the earth, except what was in that ark. So when Noah gets off that boat, he has a lot to do. And God tells him, just like he told Adam, to repopulate, okay? And so um, they start building cities, and they start talking about um, which sun builds what cities and which people came from which sun. And it's a little confusing unless you really just sit down and read it several times in a row and try to grasp it and take notes. So I'm just going to kind of um, hit a couple of highlights. Um, Abraham is a direct descendant of Shem, okay? Now, there was uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, we're going to find out that Abraham is born, but not for a couple of more chapters, okay? But you're going to find out that he's born under Shem. These were the three sons of Noah. So, you know, Abraham and Sarah and the big, you know, Abraham was another guy, a big guy, patriarch in the Old Testament. So, uh, this is what they tell you about that for, because they want you to know where he comes from. Um, it says that Noah does curse one of his grandkids. And he doesn't curse the child that did the wrong. He actually curses the grandchild. And that's a little bit, you know, um, some people are like, really? But in a way, um, I'm going to read this out of my study material. What happens is he, he has some wine and he has too much. And he's, his nakedness is shown. And two of the sons cover their eyes kind of walk backwards and cover up their dad. The other one doesn't do that. So he, um, and what, we, we don't really know for sure what kind of nakedness this is. Maybe he was with a woman, or maybe it was actually their mother. Who knows? Um, we just know it was something that he would be ashamed of, okay? And, of course, he was drunk. And um, so that goes to show that you got to be careful and not get drunk and do something that, uh, you're going to show your nakedness for, right? But anyway, so um, the son that doesn't, you know, want to cover his father has a child, and um, his child's name is Canaan, all right? So Noah actually curses the child. So it says um, the verb tenses of the curse suggest an appeal to God. The cursing of Canaan, Ham's son, implies an early understanding of the principle that the iniquities 
of the fathers would be visited on the children. And that comes out of Exodus. And, you know, it says the curse apparently is restricted to the single branch of Ham's descendants. So I will say that we don't like to hear that. We don't want to hear that. Nobody wants to pay for the sins of their mother and dad. I mean, you know, how fair is that really? But what it amounts to is when a family falls into sin, it trickles into the family. The sin grows, okay? So, um, I mean, we know that happens. And, you know, where one kid might start smoking a joint and not really do anything but get high a little bit or, or have a beer, then his children may decide that they're going to have a beer, smoke a joint, and do some cocaine. I'm just giving an example in today's world. And then the next thing you know, you know, um, they're doing math and the whole family's all messed up, okay? And then their children are messed up. And the reason their children get messed up is because then they wound up going into defects care. And they're raised by people they don't even know. And they have complexes and they have... Um, they just have a lot of mental issues and and it just it just turns over and it just it just multiplies sin multiplies okay so whether it's about sex whether it's about drugs whether it's about um an evil heart whether it's about vengeance jealousy i mean you don't have to just have sex or do drugs to be sinful i mean we can be sinful all each and every one of us in just everyday life so and we have to be careful because that will grow and get bigger. And if we let it consume us, then it can consume our families, okay? And our families for generations. So um, Noah does curse, you know, his grandson. And, um, and then Abraham was a direct descendant of Shem, one of those kids. So you got uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, I guess is how you say his name. Um, then they talk a little bit about the cities that they create in this chapter. Um, and they talk about some of their de dependents and where they lived on the face of the earth. And you can see that they do start to multiply and replenish the earth and create cities and create different kinds of peoples. Okay? So then um, that's chapter 10. And then when you go to chapter 11, we're on the Tower of Babel. Now, I told y'all y'all didn't have to read it. Um, but really, what it amounts to is these people uh, decide that they're going to build a city that's huge and a tower that's huge, and they want to build it up to the heavens. And God decides um, that that's not the best thing in the world, and he, he um, kind of puts a stop to it. And so that's what we'll, we'll uh, finish up, I guess, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Um, so I will just come and talk to y'all tomorrow night. So tomorrow, y'all read the Tower of Babel, which is chapters 11. We're going to do chapter 12, which is promises to Abraham. And we all like promises from God, don't we? And it's going to talk about Abraham and Egypt. And then Abraham inherits Canaan. And that's chapter 13. Now, we're going to stop there because in chapter 14, we're, we're going to talk about Lot. So let's, let's read 11, 12, and 13 for tomorrow. And then we will come together and talk about those. Um, and I guess the only thing in here... I already read that to you guys. I was looking to see if there was anything else, really, that I wanted to say. It gets too far ahead. I mean, we could talk about the chronological, uh, the chronological, the chrono, I cannot even say this word. I don't know why. But anyway, we'll talk about the flood. How's that? Huh? It says the rain begins um, when Noah's 600th year. He was 600 years old. The second month, the 17th day, and it rained for how long? 40 days and 40 nights. Okay? 
It says the water remained 150 days. At the end of 150 days, uh, the water decreased. The ark rested on Noah's 600th year, 7 months and 17 days. The length of the flood was 5 months of 30 days each. Now look, y'all. We just had a hurricane. And we all know what 12 inches of rain can do in a short period of time to us and our land. Think about it raining for five months. Five months. 30 days each. That much in a row. My goodness, no wonder the waters rose up all the way for my, you know, miles above the highest mountain. I mean, that's unbelievable. And then it says the tops of the mountains were visible the 10th month and the first day. Um, it took two months and 13 days before the top of the first mountain to become visible after the rain started. I mean, after the rain stopped, okay? Then Noah sent out the raven 40 days later, okay? And that was three months and 23 days later after the rains. Then he sent out the dove seven days later, which was four months past the flood. He sent out the dove again seven more days. He waited another week. It was four months and seven days past the rain. So the waters dried up in Noah's 601st year, the first month, the first day, the total length of the flood was 365 days, one solar year. Now look, y'all. I bet he was ready to build an altar, don't you? Could you imagine being in a boat for that long with that many animals and that, you know, if, I, I mean, it would have been unbelievable. But I'm sure our God in heaven, if he had any way at all, which he did, he could do anything he wanted to, probably made it more pleasant on that boat for Noah than it had to be. He had to have. Uh, because he loved Noah, didn't he? So Noah gets out of the boat and he builds an altar for the Lord. Now, I have never went to see that ark that they have built um, because they haven't built the, the same size as the real ark, but I bet it's a sight. Some of y'all may have been. And if you have, you can tell us how great it was. Um, but that's just really, really, um, the biggest deal here is that you need to know that God is the creator. And he could take away what he creates. Because he did, didn't he? He took away the garden. And he took away um, every breathing man, all the giants that it, they talked about, all the sons of God, all the sons of men, all that. He wiped it off the face of the earth. And only left Noah and his children. And that's who you and I are descendants after. And um, it also tells in here which peoples come from which son. And some of y'all might know that automatically. So let me just say that. And then we will wrap up tonight. Greek, da, 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 the Bible. I know I read that. Because I don't know it just right off the top of my head because I am not. It says the sons of Shem were selected to be the godly seed that God would uh, sovereignly protect. From Shem's descendants came the three monolith monolithistic regions. Okay? So we're talking about Shem here, and Shem is where Abraham came from, the son that he came from. So it says, from his descendants came three religions, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. Okay? Shem's great-grandson, Eber, uh, transliterated to Hebrew, the ancestor of Abraham, is singled out for special mention in Genesis of Shem's five sons, and then they name all of that. And they, and they talk about artifacts, and all that gets real detailed. And if you're interested in that, you can, of course, read your 
you know, the bottom part of your study Bible, and they're going to tell you the extras in your study Bible. But the main thing that we just need to know is he had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Ham's cursed, and Seth is the one that Abraham comes from, and he is the one that was selected to be the godly seed, okay? And, um, and some of y'all might think, well, that's not a big deal, but it is, because the godly seed is where Jesus comes from eventually, and that's how we, as children of Jesus Christ, I mean, or, or we as saved under the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, how it became available to us to have that ultimate sacrifice. So we're, we have to be thankful for Shem and thankful for Noah and thankful for Abraham and thankful for all of these descendants that our Jesus came from, right? Um, I hope y'all had a good, good day and I hope you have an even better night's sleep. Um, I had a wonderful day and um, I hope you guys did too. So we're going to say our prayers, and y'all read those chapters for tomorrow. That is chapters 11, 12, and I believe it was 13. So, and, and we'll talk tomorrow about the Tower of Babel and um, a little bit about Abraham, too. So, and Sari. She was called Sari in the beginning. So, not Sarah, but Sari. So, we'll read about them tomorrow. Um all right, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today, and we thank you for that ark, Lord. We thank you for the fact that you decided to spare that one man, Noah, instead of destroying the whole earth and world and every single man, because without you keeping Noah, um, then I'm sure you would have made a different plan and a different project, but we're glad to be a part of your project and your plan, and we're very happy that um, you kept Noah and his sons, and that you um, had the lineage of Seth, I mean Shem, not Seth, the uh, lineage of Shem to have Abraham. Um, thank you for your great plan. Thank you for your creation. Thank you for being our wonderful heavenly father that knows all, um, is all and is everywhere, sees everything, knows everything. We know that you are our God that can fix our problems and you can really do anything um, if it be in your will. And we pray that we would live um, in your will, which is to let others know about your son, Jesus Christ, and that we would not be ashamed. Um, and just help us be bold and love you more and more each day. Um, thank you for everyone that's here tonight. Thank you for allowing us to live in an area where we have your word and can read it freely. And maybe we all come back here tomorrow and be able to talk about the next three ch chapters. Um, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed night. And um, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye, y'all. Love ya.